If you clicked on this video and you were thinking, I feel like I've seen this before, odds are you probably have. This video is originally from 2020, it's four years old, and it's been off the channel for quite a while. The reasons for that have to do largely with the Masters of the Universe Origins line being sort of anemic the last few years. I lost my interest in it because Mattel's shenanigans by pulling down Jurassic Park channels and them neglecting the line itself that started out in such an innovative way and turned into such a layup there for a few years with the figures and the designs going from really exciting to really lazy. I deprioritized the line. But people have been asking me my thoughts on all the things that have come out since. Now, while I only focus on Origins pieces that are recreations or updates on things from the 80s, I don't do all that ancillary new stuff that they're putting out, I felt, well, it probably is time to start looking into planning the next big video about this, now that we're a little ways out from... Uh, the slump in Origins, as I call it. I feel like they're trying to crawl their way back a little bit with some of their uh, figures, vehicles, and this uh, Snake Mountain playset that just arrived today. But what that means is, is that I didn't want there to be a gap. And this was the first Masters of the Universe Origins video I did about the original line and my original thoughts on that first wave. And I did not want that to be absent when this video eventually comes out, which will be three or four feature videos uh, away from now. It, it's, it's not going to be tomorrow, um, but I, I'm prepping it. I'm getting it ready. There are a few other things in the queue, but I just wanted this original video back up. There have been some edits to it because in the four years that has passed between when it came out and now and the time it's been down, some things have changed and are out of date. Don't don't worry, I'm not putting like digital Jabba in there or anything like that. It's not a George Lucas special edition. The footage is the same. The commentary is the same. There were just some trims uh, that had nothing to do with my thoughts on the line itself. So if you're seeing this video, you shouldn't be seeing it in your subscription feed because I made sure that YouTube didn't push it to your subscription feed or harass you with a notification. If you're seeing it in your home feed and it's a repeat, Maybe you'll enjoy revisiting it, or you can just keep on going. Either way, I just wanted it back up before the new video comes out, and so that's why you're seeing it again. He-Man again! Ah, he's too smart for us, Skeletor. I've said it many times that the 1980s was crowned by the big three. G.I. Joe, Masters of the Universe, and Transformers. They ruled the decade, and but for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, they defeated all challengers to their toy aisle supremacy. Now, almost 40 years later, Transformers is the only one of the big three that has been continually with us on store shelves in one form or another. Masters of the Universe survived almost exclusively online through Maddie Collector and Super 7 for years. G.I. Joe is presently trying to claw its way back to retail after several years of a full brand moratorium. And now Mattel has taken the reins for Masters of the Universe back from Super 7 and launched launched the Origins line, a toy line of figures and vehicles that achieve what the 25th anniversary G.I. Joe line accomplished more than a decade ago. In a strange reversal, it seems Mattel and Hasbro have switched places in the market. When the G.I. Joe 25th anniversary line of figures and vehicles was at the height of its powers on store shelves in the late aughts, Masters of the Universe was still a subscription-only Maddie Collector product. Mattel had gone almost completely online with its action figure offerings, while Hasbro dominated retail. But now it seems they've switched places. Hasbro is moving more and more inward, becoming an online boutique of limited premium toys, while Mattel, it appears, has decided to come out of hibernation swinging to carve out a large spot for itself at retail with their reborn Masters of the Universe Origins line. What makes Mattel's move so unprecedented is that it runs counter to Hasbro's drumbeat messaging that is pushed by its devoted followers. 
namely that the toys have to be expensive now, and toy companies can no longer make many of them because reasons. Alleged reasons that didn't exist in the late aughts for the toy industry. Mattel seems to have given that corporate excuse the middle finger, and by all accounts will be going wide with Masters of the Universe Origins in 2021 after the Walmart exclusive period expires. It's a bold move for a company that lost the DC license recently to McFarlane, and lost the Ghostbusters line a few years back, and hasn't taken much of an interest in its famous Masters of the Universe property for so long, they leased it to another toy company. Even more importantly, Mattel is going back to a proven success with Origins, rather than reinventing everything from the ground up as they did with the Maddie Collector Classics line. Instead of starting from scratch, they're looking at the toys of the 1980s 80s that created one of their greatest success stories and asking themselves, what did work about these? What didn't work? What can we fix or improve and then simply reintroduce them to a new generation? Frankly, it's a brilliant move. While all toy designs have their flaws, from a collectability standpoint, Vintage Masters of the Universe has a lot of issues. Unlike G.I. Joes and Transformers, where most of the figures and vehicles can be disassembled and repaired to a great extent, the vintage Masters of the Universe figures weren't designed in a way that future-proofed them as effectively. Vintage Masters of the Universe figures have rubber cords attaching their legs to the figure which distort and dry rot, resulting in the legs coming off. While there are ways to replace these, it's not always an easy fix for an experienced collector, let alone the casual collector. Collector, and many people have no interest in fooling with such problems. The heads of the figures were also a pliable, squishy material that can discolor over time if not properly stored. And the spring action wastes on many of the figures can seize up and malfunction. These reasons alone made the Masters of the Universe Classics line more appealing to collectors over the vintage originals for a decade, resulting in the Classics figures often being more valuable secondhand than the vintage versions. However, the Classics were a different scale altogether, and not compatible with the vintage vehicles and playsets. With the Origins line, Mattel has truly gone back to Genesis, the original figure designs, assessed their limitations, made changes, and are putting them in retail stores again, complete with vehicles, creatures, and maybe even playsets down the line. The most notable changes made to the figures are in their joints. Gone are the rubber bands that held their legs onto their waists. Gratefully added are new joints at the knees, elbows, shoulders, necks, wrists, ankles, and more. Finally, we have Masters of the Universe figures that don't have to look perpetually constipated, but still retain the scale and proportions that captured the eyes of kids in 1982. Speaking of 1982, this first wave of figures mimics the original 1982 wave of Masters of the Universe on the good guys side of things. We're treated to He-Man, Tila, and Man-at-Arms. Alas, Stratos was not brought into this revised wave. Hopefully, we'll see Stratos one day soon. With these three, I immediately notice an attempt by Mattel to reconcile the pulpier sword and sorcery aspects of the original toys with the more popular Filmation cartoon. For example, Man-at-Arms retains his vintage accessories and overall look, but they've added his characteristic mustache from the cartoon, which was missing from the vintage toy since the cartoon appeared over a year after the toy line launched. Tila finally has a useful left hand when compared to her vintage counterpart, and now holds her shield versus having it clipped to her wrist. He-Man also looks pretty great, except that face sculpt. I'm really not sure what Mattel was thinking with this new face, but he looks more like a pained Kenneth Branagh or a Justice League New Frontiers character than the classic He-Man. I'd love to know what Mattel's rationale was with this odd face sculpt. On the villain side of things, Mattel provides Skeletor, Beast Man, and Evil Lynn. Evil Lynn replaces Merman from the original 1982 run, and poor Zodak, like Stratos, is omitted for a future release with Merman at some point. Beastman is pretty much an Origins upgrade on the vintage original. His whip has a thicker nylon cord, and he's got all his new joints. Evil Lynn, like Tila, now has two useful arms, and is a far more stable figure than she was in the vintage configuration, thanks to new internal engineering for the hip joints. No more janky rubber cord. 
Finally, we have Skeletor. It's odd that the faces on all of the ancillary characters were remade pretty much true to form, but for the two iconic characters of the line, He-Man and Skeletor, Mattel really reworked the faces. I'm not sure that was the best move. Skeletor has an open-mouthed screaming expression with bright red eyes. It's funny, but it gets old quick. I get that the original mini-comic artwork for Skeletor had a more expressive visage most of the time, but Mattel's 1982 Skeletor wisely toned that down for the figure itself. For this entire line, the added articulation really helps achieve more dynamic play possibilities. And I feel like the vintage He-Man toys finally have the power of our beloved G.I. Joes. In some areas, though, the revised figures are a little strange. Tila and Evil Lynn have these knee flaps to cover the knee joints. It's not a fatal design flaw, but it certainly looks inelegant. The usability of the new joints, though, is so welcome, it compensates for the oddity. And while this other issue isn't on the figure itself, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Mattel is wrapping the accessories for each figure so tightly in plastic baggies, the accessories can end up warped and dinged. He-Man's power sword on mine came out of the bag with a crunked up sword tip that had been bent over the shield. Mattel, you can dial back the extreme way you're bagging these accessories. It's overkill. Unlike most Hasbro figure lines, Mattel didn't leave their figures for the Origins line to stand alone. In this first wave, we already have Battle Cat for He-Man. Like the figures, he's a revision of the original vintage Battle Cat, which was originally a repaint of a Big Jim Tiger from the 1970s. Battle Cat didn't have any articulation. Now he has movable legs at the shoulders and elbows, neck and tail, and even an opening mouth. A great addition are the yellow eyes now on the helmet, giving him that famous filmation look. Strangely though, his actual eyes are now green with black pupils, and disappear into the plastic. I'm not sure why this decision was arrived at, because it's the one area of the toy where the vintage original is superior. The final piece in this first wave of Origins is Prince Adam with the Sky Sled vehicle. In the vintage line, the Sky Sled was a removable sub-vehicle that served as the driver's seat for the Battle Ram. There are a few great things about this set. For one, Mattel clearly believes in providing vehicles for their new Origins line. The vehicle itself comes with a flying display stand and swappable parts to convert it from the Eternian Sky Sled to one of Skeletor's versions, sometimes referred to as an evil jet. For all of that innovation, the designers made an inexplicable change. The original toy, which the Filmation cartoon replicated, had control handles on the sides of the console for the sled. This Origins version has revised the sled to utilize an independent flight yoke construct. I'm really not sure why they made this marked change to the vehicle, as it seems unnecessary. All in all, though, this opening salvo of Mattel's Masters of the Universe Origins line is really exciting. Mattel has gone back to toys that were designed for real play and corrected their shortcomings. This is in stark contrast to their Classics line, which was designed for the adult collector from day one. Plus, these figures are compatible with the vintage vehicles and play sets, which only adds to the possibilities for kids and collectors. This line could be a saving grace for the toy industry if it catches on with kids and adults and is made in quantities high enough to meet demand. After the experience I've had with them, I'm aiming to collect them all. I know it's a cheesy thing to say, but the Origins line might just have the power. And I'm pretty sure my hernia is from dealing with Eternia. Do you ever shut your mouth?